Welcome back to the Carnia podcast. In this episode, we are going to be talking about conflict and how to disagree well. So let's get into it. Hey, you're listening to the Koinonia podcast. My name is Ryan, and I am your host for this episode, and I am joined by my co-host, Heidi. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. Great. <laughs> and we have our very special guest, Rebecca, here with us on the thank podcast. You. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to have both of you here. And before we jump into this topic, I do have one question for you. It's a would you rather kind of question. Ooh, oh, I man. like these. So, would you rather... When you go shopping, have to buy 10 things that you don't need or always forget to buy the one thing that you went to the store for? That's hard. <laughs> Actually, it's easy. I you feel like this you go a, first. I was going to say, this easy? is like a, a both a and situation for me. Like I do this, I do both of these every time I go to the store. I buy 10 things I don't need and then forget the thing I came to the store for. <laughs> right. So I don't How know. Does that feel? I don't know. I don't know what it would be like to do one or the other. I just do <laughs> both all the time. <laughs> so I think I would rather always buy the thing I need. Although depending where I am, like I love to thrift. I love thrifting. So right. there I'm always buying 10 things I don't yeah. need. <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking only about groceries for some reason. And I was thinking, like, if I don't get that one thing I need to make that good recipe, like, it just really sucks, you know? If you don't have the parm to go on top of that pasta. The special cheese. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have the right cheese. Yeah. So Cheese is important, especially parm. Eat more cheese. Yeah. And Brian does all the groceries. So, like, risky. Is it risky? It could be risky if he forgets the one thing I need for a certain recipe. Does that cause conflict in your relationship <laughs> yeah. let's you tell talk us about, about how that, that conflict shall we we're bring up an off-screen example oh my goodness <laughs> we're now joined by nick in our podcast what just tell them about the time when dad bought the giant bag of, oh, of walnuts yes like Please. walnuts are expensive right like we're talking like 24.99 a pound or something ridiculous for the organic nice ones so i think i wrote down like um One walnut. I I wrote down like (laughs) uh, three walnut or something. Like, you know, really not a script. But I meant those three little packages, like so I could make some baklava. Little package. And he came home with three pounds (gasps) of walnuts. And the bag was like this big. Were they shelled? Oh, yeah. And it it caught like I, he's like um, this is kind of an expensive recipe. I'm like how much did you pay like thirty seven dollars for walnuts? <laughs> so we were eating walnuts for a long time, and I learned to be better on my grocery list. More yeah. sp- be yeah. specific, less conflict that be way. Specific. Ah, uh, oh, just saying. That's good. Good segue. <laughs> <laughs> walnuts great, are at least good for you. Usually, yes. mostly. Yeah, right. It good healthy be fat. Like yeah, good point. Three pounds of chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> three pounds of buckwheat, I mean, no, though. I mean, with, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's where the walnuts mm. ended up, is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we're jumping into this topic, um, Rebecca, I wanted uh, you to just maybe give a little bit of your background um, and why this topic is important to you mm. and you feel like you have some experience and, and can speak to this topic for us today. Wow, that's pressure. Experience. Yeah, I have a unique please. perspective though, right? Because mm-hmm. I work as a pastor here at Koinonia, but then I also work as a social worker in the community. So the when I'm working in the community, my focus is uh, emotional intelligence, mental health, uh, working on our personal biases, all of those kind of issues. And then when I'm in my pastoring role, my focus is on uh, how do we do conflict well with the truth and grace of the gospel? So I kind of have this unique perspective because I come from both of those worlds and yeah, that makes it. You got the street cred. I think I I do. do. Facts. Yeah, Yeah, I do. And so much uh, conflict resolution needed, whether it's working in the community or working here within the church body. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need it. Yeah. Like you're never not going to be in conflict. No. Like (laughs) 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 it's hard to say. (laughs) It's like, yeah, Yeah. you're you're always going to not, always be in conflict but you're always going to encounter conflict in your life so it's like you can't just ignore it and be like oh it's fine i just won't ever Are you be sure in that, conflict i feel like that's so, that's my mo like 
let's just try and avoid it. <laughs> you sound like me at the grocery store. So I think store. this is so good for people listening in, maybe on both sides, the people who are like, yeah, let's go, enter into it, have no problem speaking their mind, and the people on the other side like, I'd rather not. Can't we all just get along? So I think this is going to be so good for us to hear your perspective on how do we do this well? How mm-hmm. do we not, you know, just beat up on each other, but how do we hear each other? Yeah, um, yeah because good. doing it well, like you're saying, it's like there's the people who like – love it yeah. and they like look for conflict it seems they love it I don't yeah know. <laughs> or there's the people who try to avoid it but it's like on either side knowing how to do it well is really important yeah yeah that's good and you know the, there's a lot of people that say like this whole topic is silliness you know like what do we have to talk about like counseling or digging into our past or talking about how to resolve conflict well and and as I've worked with so many hurting people, I'm like, wow, it is important. And it's important because, and we're going to get into this, right? We're going to talk about Jesus and what he has to say about conflict. But can I read for you one of my favorite scriptures yes, please. Mm-hmm. around this? Um, Isaiah 61, this is where we see Jesus uh, talking about proclaiming goodness, binding up brokenhearted. These are like really passionate words, right? Bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for prisoners. And like, it's all right there in that scripture. He is wanting us to be set free so we can do relationships well, so Mm. we can do conflict resolution well. It's like the heart of the gospel. So when people say, ah, this is just silly, silly topic, I'm like, it's right there. Well, no, like, because hurting people hurt people, as they say. And so Jesus came to heal. Yeah. And that's why we need to lean into that and say, Jesus, heal me so I'm not causing hurt to others. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Well, so let, let's just talk about this. Let's just jump into it. When we find ourselves in a disagreement with somebody, mm-hmm. maybe not even, like, necessarily a, con- a conflict sounds like, you know, you're, like, in a fight, like, you're really <laughs> angry at each other. But just in a, a general, like, a, a disagreement, big or small. Um, I think that one of the the issues is when those disagreements turn into like personal attacks or they can right. feel like a personal mm-hmm. attack. So how do we separate those two things from how do we separate a disagreement from someone making a personal attack on me or, you know, whatever they said in the disagreement, taking it as a personal attack? Mm, that's good. Right. What you said at the end there, taking it as a personal attack, because the reality is most conflict is not um, a personal attack. So it's not usually that people have this intent to harm you, right? Mm -hmm. It's usually, it's a disagreement because we have a different opinion. Um, So if I use an example, uh, Heidi, if I say to you, Mm -hmm. like, you're just, you're a lousy person. You're like the meanest person that I know. Okay, that, first of all, is not true. (laughs) I agree. Second, it's like, that's abusive, right? Like, that's like, my intent is to hurt you Mm. and to, to harm you. We hear our kids doing this sometimes to each other, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Intent yeah. to harm yeah. with their words. And we stop them <laughs> because yes. it's not We stop cool. them because, yeah, so that's the difference between uh, the harm, personal intent to harm someone, and disagreements. They're two totally different things, really. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I think so. When, we, when we're talking about disagreeing and personal attack, what are, like, if we find ourselves in that kind of a situation, what are some ways that we can know in that moment to identify if it is a personal attack or if it is just a disagreement like what are some you know like some of the words or whatever it is that's happening how can we know what is going on in in a, in a moment okay yeah that's that's good because the reality is there is a difference between them and uh, personal harm is like that can be really hurtful personally and do a lot of damage but when we don't do disagreements well that also can be like super damaging too, right? So, okay, another example. Uh, So Heidi, I'm Mm -hmm. picking on you today. Okay. Uh, So you might say to me like, hey, last week when you were over, you said something about the way I parented that bothered me. Mm. That sounds like a good thing to say, right? You might, you know, you're bringing it up well, like, but in the moment, uh, there's a few different ways I could respond to this, right? So, um, I could take it like a personal attack and be like, oh, well, I'm so sorry, but did you ever do that? Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I got to defend myself. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> with the but. Yeah. Um, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I was tired or your kids were really annoying me or whatever it was, <laughs> right? Um, now, I could respond a different way and could say, I'm so sorry. Tell me more about what happened. Mm. That's the therapist response. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Like that's that's the one that doesn't take personal harm from the comment, but that one's harder to do. 
more often uh, we're defensive in the moment, right? Yeah. And here's the thing, the, the enemy of God. So Satan is always trying to twist words and to twist the real meaning of a situation, yeah, right? so true. So I take personal attack from what Heidi has said to me, and I get defensive. But the reality is it's probably just some random disagreement about what we think about parenting techniques, do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Like one is super harmful and causes defense. And the other one is like, well, okay, we can work out. We can work this out. Right. Does that sort of give yeah. you a bit of an example of of the difference between those two? Yeah, totally. And something I, I'm picking up on that I think is really important to this is the identity piece. Mm. Like you were saying. Yeah. Um, we get like defensive when we feel like our identity is being attacked mm -hmm. in a situation. So like in that illustration, it's like if Heidi was feeling like her whole identity was in her parenting, yeah. that is like, that's where it can go from just like a really simple, like small thing to being like, you are tearing down the entire person of who I am. And yeah. that's like where the yeah. defense piece comes from. So maybe yeah. um, we could just talk more about that, the identity piece and how mm -hmm. that fits into this whole disagreeing and mm -hmm. conflict world. Yeah. And that's good because our identity is sort of like a lens that we look through, right? Yeah. Like we've got, I've got new glasses. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. They're tries, whatever that means. The three yeah. levels. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three so glasses in one. I can is see what you guys that means. really clearly. Great. Um, it means you're a superhero. Well, I feel like <laughs> it when I use them because they're not easy to use. This is how I know I'm getting uh, old. Okay. But I can read really well and you guys are super clear. Great. So anyways, um, these are like a lens, right? Like yeah. we talk about uh, what we what we look through is how we interpret a situation. So um, the, identi the identity issue you said there with parenting is a huge one. Like if all of our identity is in our parenting, we've got this like lens that we look through everything mm -hmm. with. And if we don't know, if we're not secure in who Christ says we are, then anything you say to me about my parenting, I'm just like, whoa. Like that lens is what I see it through, and I feel that defensiveness. You can feel it, right? Yeah. When well, it, you're trying to prove yourself, right? If for some reason you feel less than in mm -hmm. some way or you have maybe judged yourself or maybe you feel like I'm not worthy to do this, there's something there, then you feel like you kind of have to overcompensate, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, no. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a passion point, right, where people trying to do their best to raise their kids or whatever. So it can be difficult to speak to that. Yeah. Um, so if, some, if, you, if you had made a comment or something about my parenting, I could totally see feeling like, oh, I'm failing. Mm -hmm. And I'm already, it's already, it, it's like the enemy wants to play on that guilt that already exists in me, mm -hmm. right? Rather than me being like, oh, I think she's trying to help. Like there's a lot yeah. of, in this that makes that, yeah, we had to talk about who who am I? I need to know it's okay. Mm -hmm. I can, I, I'm okay. You know, God has called me to parent these mm -hmm. kids. And, but in that I can receive from others because people are trying to help me. It's totally different. It completely changes your perspective, like you're saying. Yeah. And I think there's definitely something to, when you have that perspective and your identity is secure, then you're able to believe the best about others in the way that they're approaching you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you would take it less as an attack. So true. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is in that moment, the, like you just went all internal, right? You were like, oh my gosh, she doesn't think my parenting is good and da da da. Meanwhile, we were probably just having a random disagreement on whether or not kids should eat snacks before bed or not. You know, like right. parenting technique thing. It was like just a difference of opinion, right? Mm -hmm. But you took it as that like really defensive, personal thing. And well, and if I really care about your opinion, then it can extra sort of dig, right? Good and point. It, yeah, so I think it, it goes both ways where I need to be able to be secure to receive it mm -hmm. and how you present it and bring it up mm -hmm. with me can be helpful as well. So I think there's two sides to the issue. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. And, you know, there's – I like to think about um, the way we respond to things. Um, so, like, defensiveness, for example. Like, if you see this popping up in your life, if I see this popping up in my life regularly – like pop, 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 coming all over the place. It's kind of like, it reminds me of weeds in the garden, mm. right? Like, you know how they just spring up? If you see it happening all the time, you're like, okay, we can try to get rid of those. Um, but the reality is when the roots are there, they're going to keep popping up, right? Yeah. Those dandelions are going all over your lawn like crazy. And this is what happens with defensiveness. So uh, when our identity is not secure and we haven't sort of 
ripped out some of those roots. That's such a bad word. That sounds horrible. <laughs> okay, let's say when we haven't gently <laughs> dug out the root <laughs> issue of why we're defensive or why we're struggling in our identity, in our parenting, for example, then it's going to keep popping up. Um, and that's where we need Jesus to help us renew our mind. And yeah. Yeah, so it's like if you find yourself like... It's like a good tell, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. someone could say something to you and then all of a sudden you're like super angry and like super offended and like defensive. And then it's like, you can almost take that as like, okay, this is a tell for like, there's something mm -hmm. else going on here. Maybe you don't, you don't, yeah. it's not like you sit, walk around and be like, my identity is wrapped up in yeah. X and you just are waiting for someone to point it out to you or yeah. make a comment at you. It's like, mm -hmm. that's the moment when you realize what that is. So it can be like a tell for that. So what about if someone kind of is like, oh, okay, wow, I got really hurt or really offended or whatever by that comment someone said to me and it's kind of, it's bothering them. Like what can they do to kind of start to manage that feeling? Yeah, mm. that, that's a good question. And I just want to note that I feel like right now for all of us, our frustration tolerance is lower than it's ever yeah. been lower than it's ever been. So our ability, you know what I mean when I say that, frustration tolerance, like our ability to manage, like when someone says something to us and it really like gets to us right away, I feel like as as the body of Christ and just as the whole world, with all the stressors we have going on, our tolerance level is so low for that. Mm. Um, so in some ways that kind of takes the shame and guilt off of, of how we respond sometimes to people. Yeah right away we're like oh my gosh I'm the worst person ever you know it, okay we all are experiencing that right now but I like what you said you you turned inward and you were like okay so why am I why am I feeling this way why am I responding to someone this way in disagreement and we have to find this ability to realize that there is a disagreement and it sits out here you know, it's not between Heidi and I. I should pick on you for a bit. Yeah, right? it's fine. You can pick on me. <laughs> it's not between you I'll and I. I'll get offended, but it'll be okay. It's okay because we're <laughs> going to work through it. Is that the disagreement sits out here separate from us, right? And, I mean, Brian and I talk about that all the time in pre-marriage counseling with people. Like, you got to attack it together, the, the disagreement. Mm. So being able to visualize the disagreement outside of the relationship, I think, is oh, one of the wow. things that will really help us, especially when our tolerance right now is so low for yeah. differing of opinions. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I feel like I have a real world example just from last week. One of my mm -hmm. kids was melting down about something and, you know, my husband is kind of realizing like, yeah, we got to deal with this because this is, ha this is becoming a pattern. Mm. And he's trying to point out to me because I tend to be the more lenient parent. <laughs> um, right. You know, I feel like most parent, you know, I feel like couples have this issue where one is maybe a little stronger and right. one is maybe more lenient and yeah. it, they work together well because there are situations where you need to show grace but then there are situations where you need to say we need a boundary here because this isn't right. good this is not where we want our kids to end up with this type of emotional behavior right so but it was hard for me in the moment because he was pointing out a pattern of my behavior Ouch. in responding to it and he was acknowledging his own as well, but th it was a heated moment because it was hard for me to hear, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm like, oh, I'm trying my best. You know, it's not just all me. It's all, oh, and so you feel that like, but I I just get quiet. That tends to be what I do mm -hmm. and go away from it. But I have to be able to humble myself and come back when I've had time to talk to God about it and say, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying and and you're right about that I need to be able to draw some more boundaries and how do I do that? Like, can we talk about, can we be a team about it? Right. So I think that it, having humility to be able to acknowledge that mm. doesn't always happen in the moment, but sometimes coming back around to it feels like the best thing you can yeah. do. I, I don't know. I feel like the humility word you use nailed it. Mm. Like, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about in the church humility, right? How do mm -hmm. we, how do we act as human? How do we do it in our relationships? How do we do it in our parenting? And that one's huge. That's like ultimate humility, right? To be able mm -hmm. to, in those moments with your husband, be able to sit and listen to him say, Hey, here's where I think you could have done that different. And you're like, Oh <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It feels painful. Mm -hmm. But this, like, I, I think you're, you're onto something so key that humility is like a key ingredient to the healthy disagreements or the healthy conflict resolution. It's not just like a key ingredient. It's actually essential. 
Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure there's any other way mm. to do the conflict resolution well, whether that's like in our family relationships or in the wider body, if we don't have that humility. Yeah. No, I agree. It's a big one. And it's hard to do because you're really laying down your pride. Yeah. And if, if you keep clinging to like, no, 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 I've got this figured out. You'll never learn. You'll never grow. Your relationships will suffer because of it. But that's what we're seeing, right? Yeah. And I think <laughs> at least it's encouraging, you know, early in our marriage, I feel like these moments would last longer and be more of like a thorn in our side. And I hope like after 10 years, we're finally, I'm getting a little quicker Right. He's getting a little quicker yes. to humble ourselves. And I think that's like, okay, thank you, God. <laughs> We're getting quicker at this. Um, and your frustration tolerance is higher. Right. Yeah. Right? So it's not so mm. low that you're just like on each other instantly right. when there's a disagreement. Your like tolerance level is higher to be like, okay, this is a disagreement. We're putting it out here. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. Um, I love I love that idea of the disagreement being out like separate from mm-hmm. the individuals and it's like it's something that you can both have a vantage point on and both attack right. it's not like tied up with either one of you. Um, just something else I'm thinking about the identity piece is like you can identify like oh okay whatever somebody said something I got really offended it it's making me feel like my identity is wrapped mm-hmm. up too much in whatever that thing is mm-hmm. it's like now what do I do mm-hmm. it's like identity is there's like an identity vacuum it's like something's going to be filling that Mm -hmm. space so it's like you can maybe identify what it shouldn't be filled with but how do you then move on to like filling it with the right thing yeah that's good okay i'm going to use another example i love it okay who's in this one me or heidi yeah pick on ryan (laughs) oh no (laughs) okay so uh ryan says to me uh maybe we're hanging out in the foyer at church and you've like picked up a few things about me and you're like, you know, uh, Rebecca, I really feel like you should be doing a better job of caring about the kids, the kids here at Koinonia. Right. I don't think that, but. And I'm like, oh, And for the sake of the example, yes, I do think that. Okay. (laughs) So there's like a couple of ways I could respond depending on how my identity is secure or not. Right. So I could be like, oh, uh, shame could be my first Mm -hmm. feeling. Right. Like, shoot, Ryan's right. I should be caring more about the kids. Like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I could be angry. I could be like, what is your issue? Like, seriously, I love kids. I care about the kids. Uh, Or maybe I'm just confused. Maybe I'm like, oh my, I ruminate on it, right? I think about it all night. I'm like, what is going on? Like, why is Ryan thinking this? Whatever. These could be some of the different responses that I have, depending on where my identity is. But if the Rebecca with the secure identity so the one that knows she's like daughter of Christ, I'm, I'm gifted, I, I love kids, I'm sure of those things, uh, I could respond differently and just say, oh, wow, I saw your kids in the foyer. I was in a rush to get to in a meeting and I didn't get to talk to them. Mm. So like maybe it was just a complete misunderstanding, right? But if the Rebecca with the um, unhealthy identity responds out of shame, guilt, uh, fear, confusion, you're going to get a, a conflict. Yeah. Right. You're going to go away thinking like she doesn't care. There's all these, you know, but if it's if my identity is secure and we're going to have to talk about how we get there, but then I'm going to respond in a more healthy way. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to respond with curiosity and be like, why are you asking me that? Or, or I'm going to explain, um, you know, what what's going on in the moment that right. brings some light. It's kind of like shining a spotlight on the situation, right? Yeah. Instead of responding out of wounded identity, you're, when you're healed and whole, you're able to just like shine a different light on it mm-hmm. and look at it from all different directions. Yeah, that's so good. And it's, it's actually, can I say one more thing? You can say as many things <laughs> as you want. It's like we have to train our brains to do this. So when you say something to me and I feel defensiveness coming it's easy later to sit with my journal and be like, I think in these moments I felt confused or ashamed. Mm. Or You don't have that luxury in the moment, right? But if we can train our brains to say, no, I'm going to stop for a minute and try to like be outside of my body and look at the situation from a whole different mm-hmm. angle, you know, like a video when people are like over yeah. here and then they're over there and then they're over there. If we can train ourselves to do that, I can guarantee you um, – those conflict moments won't happen as often or they'll be resolved more quickly Mm -hmm. and our identity doesn't take a hit. 
Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, it seems like if your identity is secure, then you can also sort of mirror that back to, in this example, Ryan, and then believe the best about him. Like, wow, Ryan obviously really does care. Yes. And what is it that he cares about? What is he seeing? Because I also really care. Mm-hmm. So somewhere we've missed each other and or I have misrepresented or something, the yes. fact that I do care. So how can I make that right? And I think that's, yeah, a big part of what you're saying. Yeah. It's actually one of the tools that I suggest to people. So when you have a hard interaction with someone, um, we all have those. (laughs) Maybe your mind's actually thinking of certain people right now. That, Mm -hmm. Like when you talk to those people, you know you're just like triggered instantly to be defensive. And you're not able to think the best of them. It's it's like a tool to to stop and have to think about three strengths about that person. Right? So Mm. like maybe... uh, you know, the one we were talking about earlier about parenting and how I was misjudging you on parenting. If I'm stopping in the moment and I'm like, okay, what's the truth about Heidi? One, uh, Heidi is loved by Jesus. Okay, this is like the basic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. should be able Ground to do zero. this one. Human yeah. value. <laughs> yeah. Human value. Heidi is loved by Jesus. Um, and Heidi's really passionate about her kids and her family. And she's really strong about, you know, if I can frame... Yeah. Just this has to happen in the moment. Some strengths about who you are. That's a really good tool to use when you're in a conflict with someone. Well, did, even Jesus said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who use yeah. you. Like he was pretty strong about that as well. Like, can we look beyond? Can we bless? Can we call out mm-hmm. the best in one another, mm-hmm. even in the middle of yeah. complete, dis- like an enemy? Wow. Yeah, right. Not just... <laughs> Not your friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, hey, someone you're in conflict with. Totally. Yeah. And he did, right? He walked in love in everything. And, and and I've been thinking about this. Pastor Nathan was also speaking about this recently, about how Jesus didn't retaliate. He did everything in love. Now, we do see times where Jesus, like, called out sin. You know, we always go mm-hmm. back to the, like, clearing of the temple and, you know, or calling out the Pharisees. So sometimes he did call out sin, but that was pretty rare, right? Most often, he spoke words in love. Mm. right he put people first in conflicts like I can just think of story after story after story where he does that um and that's why I also love first Corinthians 13 like if that can also be this is another tip like if you can think about the strengths of people in the moment perfect tool the other one is just like memorize first Corinthians 13 like love is patient it is kind it is not you got to help me out, people. It's patient. <laughs> it is kind. It does not envy. Wrong, yeah. wrong. It does not boast. It yeah. doesn't keep any records of wrongs. Never fails. It never fails. Love always hopes, always protects, always perseveres. Love never fails. So, like, in those moments before I speak to you in conflict, if I can have that in my heart, man, it makes a difference. Or before I text something or mm. post something. Like, if First Corinthians 13 is my filter, like Jesus loved to put people first, man, it changes relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And would keep us from some of those train wrecks of conflicts that we have. Yeah. I love what you're saying about Jesus there. And I, I think it challenges me to see how he responded to people that he could, you know, he could see when people were hurting. Mm-hmm. And he appreciated that people, he was like, this is, I came to heal those who are hurting. And so he didn't judge people based on their behavior or condemn them be- based right. on the choices they made because of the hurt that they had mm-hmm. um, and the sin that they were living in. It was actually worse to be a Pharisee, to kind of be hard hearted, but to cover it up and look like it's all good, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I think I just appreciate the way Jesus approached that, that he could call out the value out of someone beyond the behavior. And of course he would have disagreed with what they were doing, but that wasn't what mattered most in that moment. It's not what came out of his mouth, right? Mm -hmm. What came out of his mouth was always love, acceptance. It doesn't mean he didn't tell them to go and sin no more or, you know, Mm. he did always speak to that, but yeah, you're right. It was his love for people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how do we, I mean, obviously Jesus has a lot to say about who we are. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot about internalizing Mm -hmm. and understanding your identity. How do you do that? (laughs) Yeah, one of the things I was thinking about was how our encounter weekends here at Koinonia are an amazing time for that. So encounter weekend set apart um, that we we can come and gather and hear teaching and have like personal prayer times, be guided through some of these processes to kind of examine sort of like take that spotlight that we were talking about, but shine it inwards. Um, And 
it's times like that where we can hear Jesus speaking to us through his word or uh, through examples in scripture or the Holy Spirit just, you know, nudging our heart towards some work we have to do inside us about those lenses that we talked about. Um, because th- it's when Jesus does that inner work in our hearts that I can interact so much more differently when it comes to conflict and, and relationships. So that's sort of one step that we can do, take time, whether it's just personally on your own or at a weekend-like encounter to do some hard work. But here's the thing, doing that emotional hard work um, is hard work. Yeah, (laughs) so true. Yeah, it's not just like, oh, you know, whatever. It it is hard. Most Mm -hmm. of us don't feel like admitting things like, I get really defensive whenever you know, Ryan talks to me in the foyer (laughs) or, you know, I I get like, I compare myself to Heidi and I'm like scared to tell people that, you know, anything like that, we hide those things. Um, So when we take the time to really uh, let someone else speak into us or do some of that hard work, man, it changes us. It changes us. And I have seen miracles happen in conflict resolution mm. uh, situations because people have done that hard work personally. Yeah. Because how we show up in a conflict is our responsibility. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know how your kids say, like, oh, she made me so mad. You know, she yeah. did it. Mm-hmm. She made me do that. Mm. Like, we kind of say that as adults mm-hmm. a lot. And I'm just picturing Jesus saying, uh-uh. No way. That is your responsibility. You carry the weight of wounds from your past and things that have happened to you, but it's our responsibility to manage it, to deal with it, to have him renew our minds and cleanse us and give us a new identity. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can't put that on anyone else. That's so good. I just had that conversation with my kids last week. I had to apologize because I yelled. I was angry and I yelled and I I say to them often, like, who's in, who's in control of your hands? Mm-hmm. Just to point out, like, right, no one else. They'll say, me. That's right. I don't control your hands because yeah. if you're hitting or whatever. Yeah. But I said, so I said to them, who's in control of my voice? And they said, you are. And I said, you're right. And I wasn't controlling mm-hmm. it well. And I was angry. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to be upset, but it's not okay to yell at you like that. And I'm sorry. And I think you're right. At the end of the day, even as parents, we need to own I am in control of myself mm-hmm. and thank God the, he gives us the Holy yeah. Spirit to, yeah, to help us. So but true. sometimes it's in the repairing. I have to trust yeah. that it's in the repairing mm-hmm. of those conflict moments with my yes. children that they're learning things. <laughs> because yeah. I'm for sure we're all going to need counseling. I, and also going to counseling, we should destigmatize because I think it's good to talk mm-hmm. to other people. But yeah, my kids are going to need it. Absolutely. <laughs> well. Absolutely. And but, ha- question for you. How yeah. did it feel when you repaired that moment? Mm. Like, how did it feel when It you... felt so good. I, I mean, I regret the choice I made earlier, but in, in the end, I realized we are not perfect. Nobody is. And if they mm-hmm. just see me, like, they're never, they're not going to be able to see me act perfectly in every moment. Yeah. So at the very least, they can see me humble myself <laughs> and repair it. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Amazing. And I think, like, when we eventually step into eternity... <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think Jesus is going to be saying like, Heidi, did you yell at your kids once, twice, three times, four times? You know, did you do this? Did you do that? He's not going to. He's going to say, how did you love them? Right? Mm-hmm. That's the most important. And he's going to say that to all of us, I believe, when it comes to conflict. He's he's not going to say like, did you parent this way? Or did you say the right thing every time? Did you, you know, follow uh, the mandate this way. Did you wear your mask or not wear your mask? You know, we've talked about all those things. He's not going to say those things. Brian always says this. I love it. He says, I think Jesus is just going to look at us and say, how did you love? How yeah. did you love those people that you were in disagreement with? And I'm like, whew, that's, yeah. a, that's a biggie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a biggie. Yeah. Because <laughs> it means laying down our life. For people, it means laying down our pride, our mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. opinions, our whatever, to enter in and see how can I help you, how can I support you. Yeah, and this Good. is where that health, humility, and teamwork—you know—some of that those core values at Quinnia are tied together, yeah. because you cannot uh, walk in humility and do those things without personal health. Yeah, doing the hard work first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we can't work as a team whether that's the body of Christ or your parenting family team without the humility or the health. Like yeah. they, they, mm-hmm. they just are all interconnected. 
Mm-hmm. And man, we got a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. But like I said earlier, I've seen miracles happen as we do this hard work yeah. together. And I really believe that. I really believe that's coming. Yeah, like I feel like um, it's intimidating to be like, I'm going to do the, the hard work mm-hmm. here. Like I'm really going to. I'm going to go to encounter and I'm really going to like let that spotlight shine on me, whatever. Like Mm -hmm. that's intimidating and that's really hard. And almost like the enemy can use that to like keep you locked up in where you are. Right. And the, you can like, there's almost a shame that comes with it. Even the shame that's like, Oh, I even have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's problems with me and I have to go to encounter to like figure it out or whatever. Mm -hmm. I have to go to counseling. Like I shouldn't even have these in the first place. Like, those mm-hmm. kind of lies about the shame and of it. It's just like it keeps you stuck in that spot, but it's like on the other side of it, it's so good. Yeah. You know, like you're saying, you've seen miracles happen mm-hmm. in those situations and it's like there that's the place that God wants us to be. Yeah. And it's like it's, you just got to like do the work and just st- take the step to get there, right? And you can take small steps too. Yeah. You know, we sometimes make it like it has to be big. You have to go for a full weekend. You have to go for some like, you know, week long thing yeah. or or, you know, 40 sessions of counseling or. Mm-hmm. OK, so all those things are good pieces, but like just taking small steps. Yeah. So when I've got a conflict and I just try to look at it from all the directions first before yeah, I. Right. right blab something or post something or say something like that's just a small step or I'm defensive say with Brian and later I process it and I come back and I say I know why I was defensive because I was hurting inside and like just those small steps are also also really good and I have a friend who just said last week and I was like yes this is so good nobody likes conflict like you said at the beginning, you're like, I try to avoid it. Well, we all do. Like yeah. nobody likes conflict, but the fruit of resolved conflict is amazing. Mm. Mm. So good. good. When you resolve it, it's amazing. And that's where you see God moving yeah. and working. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's as good as a place as any to, to end this all. Mm. Um, thank you for being here and having this conversation. There's so much good stuff. What a great conversation that we had in today's episode. If you took something away, why don't you share it with someone? If you know someone that could benefit from hearing what you just heard or seeing what you just saw, why don't you share it with them so that we can all continue to have these conversations about things that we deal with in everyday life and this journey that we're on because we are all better together. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes and we will see you in the next one.